أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Guru Mighty the most gracious the most merciful welcome to the electric mosques presentation of the teachings of Islam striving to bring wisdom and Islam into your homes into your hearts to the corners of Guyana and Allah's world, world to the medium of electricity. It's been a while since I did a fresh recording and I feel very compelled today to make this recording, my beloved divine friends and family. It is taken from the crux of the wisdom of this presentation today on Electric Mosque's teachings of Islam is taken from Surat Al-Anam. Surat Al-Anam 6. Very, very moving, section 4. And if you can find your Quran, Surat Al Anam or the cattle. And I will start, I feel compelled, from verse 36. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Or Rahmanir Rahim Maliki Yawmidin. Ya Kanabudu wa Iya Kanastain. Idina Sirot al Mustakin, Sirot al Ladina, Onamta Alayhim, Garil Maddu, Be Alayhim, Waladoli, Amin. O my Creator and Lord of the world, I thank you for the opportunity of life, for the skill and the wisdom to articulate and to communicate, and the wisdom to have commenced over 30 years ago the Electric Mosque's presentation of the teachings of Islam. Brothers and sisters, I want to read from uh, 36, that's section 4, up to section 5 with readings, explanations from the translator, and this is, in this case, is Maulana Yusuf Ali, a man who had a poetic and a very extraordinary skill and wisdom in the English language. So I'll start from verse 36. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Those who listen in truth, be sure, will accept. As to the dead, Allah will raise them up. Then they will be returned to him. So, as I read the verse, and this translator, in this edition of the Holy Quran, of Mawlana Muhammad Yusuf Ali, it is a new edition with the revised translation, and these books came to me from the Indian High Commission, and we were able some years ago to share out hundreds of copies. Yes, the government of India had given us a number of these top quality Holy Quran, which were distributed. Those who listen in truth, be sure, will accept. So listen in truth, be sure, and you will accept. Then it goes on to say, as to the dead, Allah will raise them up, then they will be returned to Him. He raises the dead up and returns them to Himself. That is why we say when we die that that person has returned to the Creator. Now, I want to give the viewpoint here of Maulana Muhammad Ali. There is a double meaning here, he said. One, 
If people listen to truth sincerely and earnestly, they must believe. Even if the spiritual faculty is dead, they must believe. Even if not spiritually inclined, if they listen, Allah is saying with sincerity and earnestness, they must believe. Even if spiritually they are dead, but have Iman. In Islam, Iman might not be everything, but it is a very major part of the Islamic faith. It is faith. Iman is having faith in the Creator. So have that faith, even if you're not spiritually fully inclined. Allah will, by His grace, revive it. And they will come to Him if they really try earnestly to understand. So when He said, even if they're dead, Allah can raise them to Him. In this dunya, as we are here now, and also even when we die. Allah can raise us to Him now. If we are spiritually dead, He can wake us up. He's not speaking only about the physically dead. He's talking about spiritual awakening, spiritual arousal. So we can commune with God and get close to Him and bring you close to and they will be returned to Him. The other, the second one is, the sincere will believe. But those whose hearts are dead will not listen. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I know many people like that. When you try to talk to them about Quran and about religion, they technically don't want to hear. They get distance. It is as Surah Luqman says, chapter 31 of the glorious Quran, Luqman the wise says, it is as if, Deafness has entered into their hearts. So they do not listen. Yet they cannot escape being brought to the judgment seat before him. So whilst they might not want to hear, they will have to be brought to the judgment seat. And that judgment seat could be here and could be the other side. Because we have hell here. And we have held the other side in the Akira, the hereafter, my beloved divine friends and family. Verse 37 Al Anam, the cattle. They say, Why is not a sign sent down to him from the Lord? Say, Allah hath certainly power to send down a sign, but most of them understand not. Allah is telling the beloved Prophet Muhammad what to say to these people because they want to see magic. They like to see magic, so they want to see a sign. And then Allah is telling him, say, Kul. Allah had suddenly power to send them a sign, but most of them understand not because there are so many signs around us because the Quran, the teachings of Islam, is a book of signs. But you have to have heart to see with, not this organ called the eye. You need to see with your heart. So, I want to go back now to, or go to the translator's Yusuf Ali viewpoint. Signs are all around them, and that is true. The leaves, a blade of grass, the cattle that produce milk, and the milk and the filth pass right close to each other in the intestines of the cow. But one is pure milk, good for you. These are signs. It's not here, but from my reading and so on, I understand the signs, the trees that bear the fruits. You put a seed and it quakes with the radiation of the sun and the rain water or water, and it quakes, and it trembles, and it germinates, and it busts apart, and it produces a tree that will grow fruits and oxygen that we may breathe. These are all signs. If they want a particular sign to suit their gross ignorance, 
they will not be humored. So if they want, oh, send me, show me this, show me that magic. Allah will not humor them. The translator is saying, for they can always pick holes in anything that descends to their level. So if they are shown this side, they can say, okay, show me the other side. Show me the other magic. Show me, do another magic. And so, friends and families, there lies the truth. And I continue now, verse 38. Pay keen attention, please, ladies and gentlemen, and get your children around and record this and share this. There is not an animal that lives on the earth nor a being that flies on its wings, but forms part of communities like you. Nothing has been omitted from the book, and they shall be gathered to their Lord in the end. Truly a magnificent reality, my friends. Truly an extraordinary wisdom, my beloved divine friends. Nothing have we omitted from, from the book and they shall all be gathered to the Lord in the end. So even the flies, they came for a purpose. The mosquitoes came for a purpose. The animal kind, the quadruped, the bipeds, we are bipeds. The mammals and the non-mammals, the reptilian. Everything was created for a purpose, including the angels and the jinns. All created and all will have to die. And all will have to face the creator and lord of the worlds. Nothing has been omitted from this holy and glorious Quran by the creator and lord of the worlds, my friend. Now, animals living on the earth include those living in the water, as I just said the fishes, the reptiles, the crustaceans, the insects, as well as four-footed beasts. Life on the wing is separately mentioned. Tair, which is ordinarily translated as bird, is anything that flies, including mammals like bats. In our pride, we may exclude animals from our purview, but they all live a life, social an individual like ourselves. And all life is subject to the plan and will of Allah. So all the creatures have to die and face the Maker. All were created for an important purpose. Beloved divine friends, family, brothers and sisters, this is extraordinary wisdom being brought out here today. And the wisdom of Ma Maulana Yusuf Ali, before to Lama Yusuf Ali, he is showing that everything is important in the universe and has a purpose to serve. But I may add to it that only man has, only man has the faculty of thought, the capacity to think, the capacity to choose, the capacity to discriminate, the capacity to create and to write only man. But all creatures have to answer to the Lord, God of the world. Everything that was given life. In 659, chapter 6, verse 59, we are told that not a leaf falls, but by His will. In other words, brothers and sisters, accept our issues. Accept our problems. Accept our pains, good and bad. Whether it is good or bad, we must accept it with the same joy, knowing that God is the watcher over us, and we must not torment our souls. For nothing happens that even a leaf from a tree can fall without the permission of God. So if you have glory and prosperity and opportunity and great health, it is the will of God. Even if you suffer from pain, trauma, illness, we ask, why me? There is a purpose to that by from our Creator and Lord of the worlds. And things dry and green are recorded in His book. 
green stuff which is good for consumption, dry stuff which might be turning into humus or compost for production of food. Everything is recorded by Allah. In other words, they all obey His archetypal plan. His archetypal plan, archi, archetypal, archi is like architecture, typal, perfection, so it's like his perfected plan. But Maulana Alama Yusuf Ali was a man of a great command of English language. His ar archetypical plan, A R C H E T Y P A L, his ar that is his plan. His architecture of the universe and the universes and the billions of universes and everything that flies and no clash in the sky. As they move in their orbits, all the planets spinning in perfection. The book which is also mentioned here is perfect, that is the Quran. They're all answerable in their several degrees to his plan. Everything, including this Quran, the angel, the archangel, even Gabriel, angel Gabriel, Jibreel, and all the angels, they all have to answer according to the plan of Allah. And everything has to die, including angel Jibreel. They all have to die one day. So they all are answerable to the Creator, Lord of the worlds. They shall be gathered to the Lord in the end. Alama Yusuf Ali is trying to tell us this is not pantheism it is ascribing all life activity and existence to the will and plan of God so if we get sick and we are to die ladies and gentlemen we must face the reality a brother of ours during the Ramadan at the Masjid Al Munawar the Mosque of Enlightenment I invited them to come and talk and he spoke he had the COVID and he had it bad. He was somehow or the other taken to the United States of America. Maybe by a special plane uh, with a wonderful wife. His wife, our beloved sister, Camila Bima. And he has beautiful children, my brothers and sisters. And he said when he was in the hospital, having been a, a revert to Islam or he accepted Islam, he was in a, a church hospital. And the doctor came to see him. And the doctor gave him a book because he was in depression. And he had all kinds of things stuck up to him. And he read the book. And the Christian book said that nothing happens without the knowledge and the will of Allah. The sickness and death are sometimes given for this sort of a purpose. Death is a necessary component of realization and reality and gives us a humility as the sickness here this brilliant boy returned to Guyana and he spoke and I cried and I bless him for he reminded me that not even a leaf nothing can happen your prosperity or your success or your business nothing happens without the will of God It is all a part of the archetypal plan of the Creator. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, brothers and sisters, let us always strive for righteousness, for goodness, for joy, and accept the fact that subhanahu wa ta'ala will never give us more than we can bear, and that is a purpose in anything. Now let us see what else I can give you. Those who reject our signs are deaf and dumb. Verse 39. In the midst of darkness profound, whom Allah will it, he leave it to wonder. Whom he will it, he place it on the way that is straight. So, those who reject his signs are dumb and deaf. He's telling us. And they are in the midst or the depth of darkness, profound. Quran, Allah's words. So whom Allah will it, for them, He leaves them to wonder. That doesn't mean He abandons them. 
if they call upon Allah and cry out to God that they made mistakes and they're asking for salvation, Allah will bring them home. He leaves to wonder whom he wills. If you want to choose that, then go. And then he's going to give you more of that if you want it. Until you turn around. He places it on the straight way. He places it on the way that is straight. According to whom he wills. Because you listen. You're not deaf and you're not dumb. Let us see what the this brilliant... Alama Yusuf Ali is saying, The limited free will of man makes a little difference. He's telling us, because we have free will, we make some difference, right? Over other animals. If he sees the signs but shuts his ears to the true message and refuses like a dumb thing to speak out the message which all nature proclaims that according to the plan of his limited free will, he must suffer and wonder. So with that free will, he chose to be deaf and dumb. And he chose to wonder. So Allah will leave you to wonder. He cannot come because he gave you free choice. He has to be left to wonder with that little free will. But just as in the opposite case, he will receive grace and salvation who turns to God to the Creator, to Allah. So this is my the story, and I go to verse forty now. Say, think ye to yourselves if they come upon you, the wrath of Allah, or the hour that ye dread, would you then call upon other than Allah if you are truthful? When the wrath of Allah falls. And the one that you dread the death and it comes. What would you do? Who will you call? You know you're going, you know your mistakes. If you are truthful, Allah is asking, would you then call upon other than Allah? Reply, if you are truthful. Then the Quran again, nay, on him would you would ye call? And if be his will, he would remove the distress which occasioned your call upon him, and you would forget the false gods which you join with him. So basically, uh, false gods is not necessarily idolatry or worshipping things of nature. It could be our ego. It could be our, our, our love for wealth that we turn into uh, gods, so to say. Near him would he call. He said, no, you would call God when you're in distress. He would remove the distress which occasioned your call upon him. And you would forget the false gods which you joined with him. So if you call upon him, he is going to stand with you. And he is going to represent you. And he is going to be joyful that you called upon him. So he will save you. You will get salvation from the Lord. Section 5, verse 42. Before thee we sent messengers to many nations, and we afflicted the nations with suffering and adversity that they might learn humility. He sent many messengers. They did, it means they did not listen, and we know about that. Our the people of Hud and others, the people of Noah and others, who did not listen to their messengers, that came to them to teach them. And so they were afflicted with suffering and adversity that they might learn humility. So let us see what else Allah is talking and then we will get a, a viewpoint from Alama Yusuf Ali while I'm sharing mine in between. Verse 43, that the suffering reached them from us. So they started to feel pain and misery and lots of diseases and failures. Why did they not lord humility? Yes, Allah is asking. Quran, you know, 43. Al-Adam, 
chapter 6, verse 43. Why did they not lord huma humility? Allah is asking after he sent messengers. On the contrary, the hearts became hardened and Satan made their sinful acts seem alluring to them. So the sinful things seem alluring and joyful to them. And so their heart got even harder, even though they got afflictions. They did not learn humility. So let us see what Alama Yusuf Ali is saying. Suffering, sorrow and suffering may, if we take them rightly, turn out to be the best gifts of Allah to us. According to the, to the, to the Psalms, it's referring to the Bible, XCIV 12 Blessed is the man whom thou chastened, O Lord. He's quoting the Bible. Through suffering, that's the Old Testament, through suffering we learn humility, the antidote to many vices and the fountain of many virtues. But if we take them the wrong way, we grumble and complain. We become fear hearted and Satan gets his opportunity to exploit us by putting forward the alluring pleasures of his vanity fear. This man is a true poet and a master in English language. So he's saying, again I'm repeating to you, sorrow and suffering may, if we take them rightly, turn out to be the best gift of Allah to us. And according to the Psalms, to, to the Psalms of the Bible, he is saying, quoting, Blessed is the man whom thou chastened, O Lord. Through suffering we learn humility, the antidote to many vices and functioning of many virtues. So humility can give us virtues and make us, while we are suffering, humble and develop the virtues. But if we take them the wrong way, we grumble and complain and we fight. We become faint-hearted and Satan gets his opportunity to exploit us by putting forward the alluring pleasures of his vanity fair, the ego, the vanity. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, brothers and sisters, what a beautiful, magnificent message from the Creator and Lord of the Worlds. And explanation from Maulana Muhammad Ali. My beloved friends, family, brothers and sisters, I will now come to an end with a blessing and a prayer unto you all, in which I ask Allah to bless those who are ill and unwell. Some people have been told they take a cup and listen to the words of the Quran as I read in the English or, or the Arabic and they let the cup of the water or the glass hear the sound and they drink it as a healing and sometimes they sprinkle it on themselves so my advice to you if you want Quranic healing you go to YouTube and you ask for Islamic or Quranic healing and you will get some wisdom and recital there by far better than what I do but I'm going to offer a prayer to one and all and ask that those who want me can touch my hand as I bless you through the Creator and Lord of the Worlds. He Allah beget not, nor is He begotten, and there is none like unto Him. He is the Creator of the heavens and the earth, and He feeleth no fatigue in protecting and guarding them. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kuluzu bi Rabbin Nas, Malikin Nas, Ilahin Nas, Min Shuril, Waswasil Kanas, Allah Ziyo, Waswi Sufi Sudur Nas, Min Dal Jindati, Wanas. Kuluzu bi Rabbil Farak, Min Shuri Ma Karak, Wamin Shuri Gasikin Izawa Kap, Wamin Shuri Nafasati Filukad, Wamin Shuri Hasid in Izahasad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kuluhu Allah Wahad. Allahu Samad, Lam Yulid, Walam Yulad, Walam Yakullahu Kufuanad. Bless the listeners. 
Bless those who are unwell. Give them humility and peace. Oh Allah, you know what is best. Bless them with mercy and guidance. And our country. Bless our president. Bless every minister. And bless all who care for our country. Bless the sky and the sea and the earth. The waters. Everything that brings forth food. We thank you, Lord, for nothing is possible without you and your glory and your mercy. La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah La ilaha illallah I bless you brothers and sisters I touch you now, if you want to touch my finger, touch it in the name of Allah. For nothing is possible but by Allah. I hold his Quran and he, Allah, can bless you through his Quran. And I am just a servant, a friend, a brother. May the peace, mercies, and blessings of Allah be with one and all. Rabbi Jalli Mukim Salah, Umin Zuriyati, Rabbana Watakabal Dua, Rabbana Firli Wali Wali Daya, Walil Mukminilna, Walmukminati Yoma Yakabul Hisab Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah